auricular therapy being done in China and in the East, and there is needle acupuncture, partly because the equipment for doing it is reusable, it's less expensive, and it actually may be more effective. But here in the United States, the, the part of acupuncture that has caught on has been the use of needle acupuncture, body acupuncture. But uh, doing acupuncture on the ears, and I'll show you a, a slide later on in the presentation, you can do needle acupuncture on the ears, and it is being used extensively in uh, drug and alcohol treatment uh, therapy. So, but today I wanna to just kinda of give you a little bit of an overview on uh, what auricular therapy is and a little bit about uh, my, my understanding of it. I had never actually heard anything about it until I had come to work here. And it turns out that, uh, that Dr. Reardon uh, himself uh, had studied under Dr. Paul Nogier. Uh, Dr. Paul Nogier was a French neurologist that at one point had a uh, patient come to him and uh, he, would, he was having chronic back pain and he was not getting results. And so he went to a, uh, a therapist uh, who practiced a very crude form of auricular therapy. Uh, what they did, this, what this therapist did was heat up a screwdriver, make it real hot, and then he knew where the back pain point was and he would actually burn that point. And the back pain would go away. Yeah. <laughs> of, course, of course, it's kind of like that thing, you know, now his ear hurt really bad, but his back felt great. <laughs> so anyway, Dr. Nogier got very interested though when he heard this story that, gee, I wonder if there was something to it. And so he began to embark upon a project of uh, mapping the body, and, and as you can see from this slide, the, uh, the ear, the auricle, is like an upside down baby. And so uh, the head, of course, would be the lobe, and then the back would be along the edge of the ear, and the, uh, the, uh, the internal abdominal organs would be the central part of the ear, and the, the, the arms and the feet would be the front part of the ear. And so he began to, using ice and heat and different things, he, he began to map it out and he found out that there really was a one-to-one a, a, a -one correspondence between these points on the ear and the, the areas of the body. So you can, you can kind of look at this and see that the, uh, the person, there's a kind of a, a, a head, a face, the skeleton, the, the fleshy part of the body, it's all kind of there in the ear. And he actually found that this correspondence did exist. And then as he began to research uh, this further, he went to China and started studying with acupuncture doctors and realized this had been known for over 5,000 years. So it was not new information, but he had rediscovered it. And uh, he, Howard, did bring this ancient knowledge more into modern uh, neurology in terms of uh, uh, making use of it clinically. So one way to think of this, and, I've and a lot of people have asked me, like, how in the world could this possibly work? How could treating, like, if you've got a uh, pain in your neck, you could, uh, I guess I don't have a... But this would be roughly where the, the, uh, ne the neck point would be. And so if you do have a pain in your neck, you can reach up and grab that with, you can pinch that point between your fingers and, and see whether or not it's sore. Now, if it's not sore, probably there's no, no, there's no issue. See, you can use auricular therapy two ways. You can use it to treat known problems, or you can use it as a diagnostic tool. And so Dr. Reardon used to think of it, he used to say that the uh, auricular evaluation was much like an, uh, the poor man's CAT scan, that you could basically look through the entire body and by finding active points that could point out areas that you, you do not know are a problem that really are a problem. So back to this uh, analogy of 
how, how, how is this all connected? And so probably it's better if I just kind of show you this. This is a poorly, uh, poor diagram, but it nevertheless kind of points out that when you have a point on the ear that is, is either hurting or, or shows up uh, with resistance, and you can measure this with this, with this special machine, you can, you can determine where the resistance is, uh, that that point, let's say here, on the, which would be like on the back, corresponds to the part of the brain that regulates that, party, that part of the body uh, down in the body. So you're, in other words, your body is completely mapped, so to speak, in your brain. Every part of your body has a connection with your brain. And your brain is the kind of master regulator of your body. And you could think of the brain as the central processing unit for your body. The ear is like the screen, or, or I'm sorry, like the keyboard. It's like, it's like a, it, it like can connect you with that part of your brain. So when, when we do a treatment on the ear, on let's say the, uh, the neck point of the, of the ear, we're actually connecting to your brain and changing what's going on in your brain, and then that's changing what's going on in your neck. Does that make sense? Let me, go, let me kind of say it a couple, couple more ways. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the body, everything in the body is regulated by the brain. All parts of the body are connected to the brain. And I don't know how many of you have seen um, the uh, reflexology maps, where you look at the bottom of the foot or you look at the hand, and you can basically uh, map anywhere that's on your body on your hand, and it's 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 a it's a kind of a esoteric concept that the the whole is always contained in the part. So the whole of the body is represented by the ear, and when you treat that part of the ear, you're treating that part, but but you're not but you're treating it through the brain. You're actually connecting to the brain, and then that goes to the part. And so uh, let's go a little bit further in some, in some of the things I have for you here. So um, I really was not familiar with this. They don't teach auricular therapy in Western medical school, as you might imagine. Um, but when I came on board and started working with Dr. Reardon, he pretty much had all of our new patients undergo some auricular therapy. And he himself uh, did much of it because he went and studied with Dr. Nogier. Uh, evidently, back uh, in the 50s, he, Dr. Reardon found this fascinating enough that he wanted to go right to the source and, and work with the, the doctor that kind of was responsible for bringing this back into uh, the Western way of thinking about how to deal with uh, uh, complex pain and other complex medical issues. And so uh, soon after I arrived, though, he wanted me to learn about it, and so there was a certification course that I went to, and I think uh, Andrea also went to it, and so we are both certified in doing auricular therapy. But in a sense, you don't, what's, what's interesting about it is that it's not, it's not as complex as you would think. It's, it's much simpler to learn than, uh, than acupuncture. With acupuncture, you have to learn the different meridians and you have to learn combinations of different needles. But in auricular therapy, uh, there's been a number of people who have mapped out these points very carefully and have developed protocols in terms of how to use the points. And so uh, all these various points, in addition to the points that, that correspond to pain areas, like for example, uh, uh, you, you know, we, we were talking about the neck, that this would be the area for evaluating neck pain or back pain. There's, there's many other points that have been discovered that deal with common conditions. So there's an allergy point. This shin min point is one of the master points that I'll talk about in just a second. Here's a muscle relaxation point. The hunger point we've been using quite a bit here uh, in, our, in our weight loss program. Go ahead and yeah, come in and have a seat. Yeah. Is there a bunch of Luncheon, uh, in, in the back there, check and see, I don't, I don't know, where, where did you guys get your lunches? Out back, yeah, see if there's, yeah, there's some back there. So uh, we've been using this, you can, you can uh, stimulate the hunger point and 
stimulating these points is very interesting. In, in, uh, normally in, in Western thinking, we, we would stimulate something to either uh, block it. Usually that's what we do in medicine is we, you know, you think of uh, blocking a point. But what I, what I think is so interesting about uh, Eastern medicine is that it's, it's an adaptogenic response, which means it's a regulatory response. So if you, if you have excessive hunger and you stimulate that point, it will bring your hunger level down. I suppose you could use the same point if someone who was anorexic, you could stimulate that point to bring their hunger up. So in other words, it has a normaliz normalization process. Adaptogenic means you tend to normalize the functioning that's related to that particular point. So by the same token, the tranquilizer point would be, if someone came in very anxious, you could stimulate that point to, to calm down. And, it's, and it, it is very interesting uh, when we take patients over, and Andrea will vouch for this, is that we'll have patients that are very talkative or they're nervous or they, uh, some people are just very talkative. And they're talking, talking, you lie them down the table and you start the auricular therapy. Immediately they close their eyes and go into their, it's like you go into their inner world and they're very calm, much calmer and more inward as they are having the treatment done. So there's something about how auricular therapy changes the functioning of the brain. So you think of it as brain therapy. It's, you're actually working on a person's brain, but you're accessing it through the keyboard of the ear, much in the same way as that there's letters that you type in uh, in order to get your computer. It's like commands to make the computer work in a certain way. In a similar way, when you're doing auricular therapy, you're changing how the brain is functioning by putting in these specific, by stimulating these specific points. Probably the, uh, the, the thing that we try to do with uh, every patient is to treat their master points because one of the things that I've seen really helpful with auricular therapy is our patients come in and they've, they've had a chronic condition or they've had stress or they've, had, uh, they've been struggling with some kind of a health problem and, and Believe me that over time that will throw you out of balance. And one of the beauties of auricular therapy is by treating the master points, you can help a person to rebalance, to bring them back into a state of uh, calm and uh, equanimity. And so uh, the, the three sh master points that are listed here, one is the Shin Min, right up here, and then there's the point zero and the thalamus. We actually treat 10 master points. There are 10 major master points. Uh, the, the first five are, are uh, the Shen Men, right up here again, and uh, which is to me a uh, very, very, it's, um, it's called the Spirit Gate, uh, which that stands for Spirit Gate. So these go way back in terms of uh, Chinese and Asian thinking. Uh, sympathetic. There, what happens, as I'm sure when, when the Chinese were uh, dealing with this 5,000 years, they didn't know about the autonomic and the, the, the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. So a lot of these, the, the different points have been renamed in terms of what <coughs> Dr. Nogier found in terms of how they relate to modern concepts of how the body works. But anyway, this one, the second one is a, the sympathetic relates to uh, your autonomic nervous system and so many conditions like high blood pressure, irritable bowel, they're, 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 what's, what's going on is an imbalance of the autonomic nervous system. So by using these master points, you're bringing the autonomic nervous system back into better balance. The zero point is just kind of like the center of the ear. So they call it the zero point. And so it's very much used for centering. The uh, sub, subcortex, and the internal uh, secretion point, uh, these are all, the internal secretion point has to do with the endocrine system. And it's also a, very much a balancing point. So if I go back to the, the names here, the zero point has to do with balance. These also relate to the different chakras. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of chakras, but chakras relate to uh, very basic uh, energy uh, areas in the body. And, and by balancing the chakras, you tend to bring about an overall balance within the functioning of the body. So the, the autonomic point that I was showing you earlier relates to the sympathetic nervous system, and it's the first, 
first chakra, Shen Min is second chakra, zero point is third chakra. I don't know what the fourth chakra is. It's not really clear from the, the materials that I had. The fifth chakra is the thalamus. The thalamus is a very important uh, part of the brain that uh, basically all of the circuitry kind of goes through the thalamus. And then the sixth chakra would be the endocrine system. Uh, and again, as you would be aware, the endocrine system is very important in terms of regulating the body, all the various hormones in the body. So if you can, if you can get that balanced, then you're balancing many, many systems simultaneously within the body, which to me is the really exciting part of this. And down at the bottom there, the master cere cerebral probably has to do more with the cortex. And so if you have someone that's worried, uh, you, can, you can treat that point and bring them back into a state of calm. And so some of these other points, these other um, uh, five master points have to do with uh, allergies. Uh, uh, the tranquilizer point has a Valium-like uh, effect when you stimulate that point. The corpus callosum, the oscillation point, has to do with that part of the brain that, communicate, that connects the left to the right. So once again, you're balancing left the, 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 uh, the, the left-handed thinking with the right-handed thinking. Left-handed thinkers tend to be very specific, uh, left-brained, and then the right-brained people tend to be holistic. But if you can balance those two, you know, health in essence is balance. And so the cool thing about uh, auricular therapy is that you have a very quick way to take someone who's out of balance and by uh, stimulating these points, you're bringing them back into a state of of balance. Um, so the second, these five secondary points, uh, you have the allergy point up here up top. The oscillation point is the corpus callosum balancing the two hemispheres of the brain. The tranquilizer point, who wouldn't want to have that point stimulated. Um, the master sensorial point uh, relates to the, uh, uh, let's see, the master sensorial point relates to Sensitivity. So uh, some people are overly sensitive and some people are insensitive. And so again, you want the balance between those two extremes, the ma master sensorial. Obviously, people that have allergies are overly sensitive to the environment. People who have emotional tr trouble dealing with uh, certain situations, they may be overly sensitive. So again, balancing that back, that sensitivity level back I think is a representation of gaining better health. So a lot, of, a lot of what auricular therapy is, is helping people to regain health. It's not just treating the problem, it's bringing uh, the, the mind and the body back into a state of balance and better, better overall health. So the thing about the master points too, and this kind of the first, one of the things I want to kind of uh, convey to you is that when, when, uh, when patients come in very often we'll do protocols a protocol of therapy. And so uh, these are combinations of auricular points that you can use to treat complex medical conditions. And so it's almost like when you go out at night and you look up and you see uh, a dipper, obviously we would call that the Big Dipper. It's a constellation of stars that we have identified and put together in our mind as being a certain thing, you know, a certain group. Uh, the uh, Orion is one of my favorite constellations, and I love to go up and look at that. Well, these are like constellations of points on the ear that when you treat this combination of, of uh, points, you're able to achieve uh, improvement in complex medical conditions. And my first experience with that was with our son, and it's a good thing he's not here today because he's a third year medical student right now, but back when he was like, I don't know, six or seven years old, he was still having trouble with bedwetting. This is, that's what's called enuresis. And so I didn't want to really put him on medicine, uh, but yet he was embarrassed. He, he needed help with it. And he says, Dad, what can we do? And this was right after I had uh, gotten my training, and, and it did turn out we had a portable unit that I could bring to the house. So every night for about a week, I put our son John through about a 10 minute uh, treatment using the auricular therapy protocols, treating the, uh, the bedwetting points. And so I've kind of put these up here just to kind of give you a feel for it. 
And when you see these points, there, it's, there, there, is, a, there is a logic to it. Uh, of course, you would treat the kidney point, wouldn't you? If you're having someone that's uh, having bedwetting, it has to do something with the kidney. The sympathetic point has to do with balancing the autonomic nervous system, and many people feel that, uh, that enuresis has to do with an imbalance in terms of how the body regulates uh, the, the autonomic nervous system. The urethra. Uh, the bladder point, uh, here's another urethra point, another kidney point, and uh, the adrenal point, because there's a lot of people that feel that bedwetting has to do sometimes with stress. And so by, uh, by stimulating the adrenal point, you're balancing adrenal function, and we find that that's very commonly a part of any chronic illness. The zero point, which is just overall balance within the body. Uh, strangely enough, the liver, uh, I, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that fits in other than, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that the liver, we know now that the liver is a major detoxification center, may have to do with uh, food allergies. And I, I know when I tr talk to patients nowadays about enuresis, we're talking about certain food allergies, dairy sensitivities, things like that. So by treating the liver point, that may be helping out along that line. I forgot to mention the, the um, the allergy point, so that's one of the points that's treated with the uh, enuresis protocol. So allergies could be playing into this. Uh, then there is the uh, subcortex point, the thalamus. So just your overall balancing of the brain. Here's another adrenal point. The excitement point, there's a point on the ear called the excitement point. Some people feel the kids that are enuretic are overly excitable. The internal secretion point, that's now we're back to the endocrine system, getting the endocrine system balanced out. And then finally, there's one called the, uh, I think it's called the occiput point. I'm not sure why that's in there, but very often over, over time, uh, people who are using the auricular therapy have been able to determine which points have the greatest effectiveness. So does that give you a sense of, of how a protocol works? It's like a constellation of points that can be used to deal with common problems. And so protocol categories, there's protocols for everything. So if you've got abdominal organ problems or addictive behavior problems, hearing, if your hearing is not right, if you've got heart disease, allergies, urinary problems, musculoskeletal problems, very common use of auricular therapy, digestive problems, it can help you improve eyesight, uh, can be used to balance glandular disorders, definitely can have an, a nice effect in terms of psychological disorders stress-related disorders. So uh, there, I just took one of these categories, the addictive behaviors category, just to show you that there's about eight different protocols within that category. So every one of these categories that I'm showing you have anywhere from six to eight different protocols under each category. So there is a vast number of protocols that have developed over time that can be utilized in terms of uh, helping you uh, make better use of uh, auricular therapy. So addictive behaviors, this is probably one of the areas where auricular therapy has found its greatest use. Uh, it's been surprisingly effective in terms of alcohol and drug uh, treatment. So nervous drinking, alcoholism, you know it's interesting, nervous drinking leads, can lead to alcoholism which can lead to liver dysfunction which can lead to jaundice and pancreatitis so, so there, is, there can be kind of a progression of things. And so often these uh, protocols have a lot of similar common points and you know, there's just slight variations from one protocol to the next. Uh, drug addiction, smoking withdrawal, and weight control. Anything that involves addiction, this works uh, quite well as a, a way of helping you, once again, bring yourself back into a state of balance. I think everyone would agree that addiction is a type of being out of balance. And so the auricular therapy can balance the, the functioning of the central nervous system in such a way that you're able to not only uh, change the, the uh, physiology, and, uh, but you're actually changing the psychology and that can help you lead to behavioral change as well. Now in, in many of these uh, drug and alcohol treatment centers, they actually use the needles, the acupuncture needles, and uh, place the needles into the different points. It looks like that would be painful but it's really not. Uh, I mean, it is painful, but it's not. You, once the needle's in, it's not. It doesn't continue to hurt. And the the uh, the balancing 
effect starts to kick in, and, and I've seen several films now of, of, of centers where they're using the actual needle auricular therapy, and these people come in for their therapy and they get the needles put in, and they all kind of look like they're just asleep, but they're, it's almost like they're meditating. And when you actually are receiving auricular therapy, and here we don't use the needles, we actually we call what we do a needless form of acupuncture. Uh, uh, it's an auricular therapy using electrical stimulation. It's a like a tens treatment, but we're we're stimulating the points that are that are in the protocols or the master points with the idea of helping people to to achieve that balance. But we don't have to worry about hepatitis or whether or not the you know obviously we would not reuse a needle. But that's one of the reasons why auricular therapy is more popular in rural. Uh, China is that uh, you basically just have to clean off the uh, the uh, the instrument, and you don't have to reuse the needles. You're not puncturing the skin, but you're using an electrical uh, impulse, uh, and it does it does sting just a little bit as if you were having a needle placed. But it's uh, it's much like uh, it's an electrical version of needle acupuncture. It's one of the theories there's a there's increased electrical resistance at these points. And, and some people feel that uh, when you have a, 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 a condition that the meridians are blocked, the energy flow is blocked, and when you stimulate this point, and that, that, that in turn stimulates the part of the brain, we don't really know exactly what happens, but the brain sends a signal. There are some people think that uh, endorphins are released at the point, like if you're stimulating the neck point, and that goes up to your brain, then your brain stimulates the release of endorphins. It may change the microcirculation. It may do something to change inflammation, the cytokine release. It may stimulate stem cells. We don't know. We just know that uh, it's doing something to improve the health of the corresponding area of the body. And then when you stimulate a, a, a protocol, when you do a protocol treatment, you're doing kind of like a symphony. You're, it's very, very much like uh, taking many instruments at the same time and creating a song. Uh, it's, it's, it's doing several things simultaneously in order to achieve improvement in the functioning of that, of that individual. So here's the hiccups protocol, <laughs> in case any of you run into that. Uh, obviously, it's not, it, wouldn't be, it would be a little difficult for you to, to treat yourself, though you can. If It's kind of interesting. If you want to do a little self uh, auricular therapy, you can take uh, a, a pencil that's been used that's not just recently sharpened but more of a dull kind of pencil and you can, you can probe the different points in your ear. And, and if you did have the hiccups, it's very likely that you would have uh, a, a tender Shen Min point and the, the diaphragm point obviously would, that, that kind of makes sense in terms of hiccups. The point zero against the, the balancing, then the stomach point and the esophagus point. So when you start looking at what's in these protocols, they do make sense. And once again, here's the liver point, which is part of the, uh, part of the, the, the digestive system. And in addition, uh, we, you have the thalamus and the sympathetic, the internal secretion. So all of these things have to do with, with balancing the body. But what, we've, what I've noticed when I was more actively doing auricular therapy, I don't do it so much now we have uh, Andrea is our, is our, is our uh, auricular therapist here. But when, if you do uh, fi have someone that has the hiccups and you, before you even use the electrical stimulation at that point, you can take a probe and there is actually swelling at that point. The inflammation that's giving rise to the, the condition will show up as either swelling or redness or some kind of uh, change in the ear. And so one of the things that Dr. Reardon would have me do is he'd say, I want you to inspect the ear before you treat it. Because very often these points that are active actually will show physical changes. And so if you've got little red points, uh, like for example, I used to have a lot of more trouble with allergies. And so that point used to be very much swollen. So anyway, these, this is a, just a kind of an introduction to kind of give you a sense for how auricular therapy can be utilized and uh, we do, we, we uh, oh, here I put this in. If you want to give yourself a total body massage while in church and you're falling asleep, just take your ears and just, you can do this right now, just kind of take your fingers and just kind of 
just really start massaging your whole ear and, and close your eyes and you'll find that you get all kinds of wonderful little tingles throughout your body as if you were getting a total body massage. And uh, if you've got a headache, take that earlobe and just kind of work with the earlobe. Uh, you know, right above the earlobe is the neck point. If you've, got, if you've got a pain in your neck, you can kind of work that point. And Dr. Reardon, if he had, if he had someone that had like neck pain or back pain, he would grab their ear and squeeze it really hard. And people would go, oh my gosh. You know, almost like someone giving you a really uh, hard massage. And then once he let go, they'd say, oh, oh, that's feel much better now. It's almost like the, it would release that, uh, some of that inf inflammation. So anyway, it's, we could probably talk about this all day. And uh, Andrea has some really thick books written by Dr. Terry Olson. He's probably been one of the main Western uh, uh, educators in the field of auricular therapy. And the books are amazing. If you ever want to see them sometime, just all the different protocols and, the, and, the, and what's been done and how they've uh, translated this into so many different languages. This is, this is a universal therapy that's available. It doesn't matter which language as long as you know where the points are because the points are true for just about everyone. There can be a little bit of variation, obviously, but by using this, uh, this stimulator, you can find out where they are. You want to, why don't you tell them what you're doing as you do it. So, <clears throat> so we're going to, th this is, yeah, just to, Sorry. We will st always start by cleaning the ear with a little bit of alcohol. This makes sure the make sure the ear is clean of any dead skin cells. Helps the machine work better. It's really nice to be a, a patient getting auricular therapy because it's not uh, it's not a painful experience. It does you do feel some little tenderness, but it's uh, it's it's always very interesting. So we're cleaning the ear so that you have a good contact. You get some of the oils off and uh, so that the uh, probe will properly interact with those different points. And then I, okay, and this is the, the ground. It's your friend. Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with some master points. So we'll always start with point zero. Could you ex explain to them what the, the, what the sound yes. thing? I was going to turn it up so everybody could hear it. <laughs> this is the lovely sound this makes. That's kind of our zero. This is going to be like our baseline. This is good. So if we touch that point and nothing happens, that would be great. That, that, that means there's probably not a lot of pathology at that point. Pathology at that point. <laughs> you can hear the difference. <laughs> so that tells me that that signal is being blocked. So we'll go ahead and treat. See, and, and really, whenever I give a lecture, I'm out of balance. You know, if you've ever been in front of an audience, it doesn't matter. It throws you out of balance. And so that represents probably that to a degree. <laughs> that, that little E, t that's how many treatments? Eight seconds. Eight seconds worth of treatment when every time it goes E. The Shin Min or the Spirit Gate. And it's not painful at all, but it does kind of have like a little achiness. It's the autonomic. And, and it really is interesting because here I am in front of an audience getting this done and it, you, it's like you don't want to talk when this is going on. It's, it's, it's not a drug, but it does put you into an altered state in a good way. And that was the thalamus. Yeah, the so. thalamus is that central processing unit up in the, the mid part of the brain. The greater the swing in the sound, the more active or more involved that point is or more out of balance that point is. So we're gonna calm him down now. <laughs> a 
the tranquilizer, the uh, endocrine or the hormones, Yeah, it really does feel good. And I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm always fascinated with it. And so hopefully those of you that are interested, uh, Andrea's going to stay around so that you can at least have a couple of your master points treated. Oscillation. That's the corpus callosum, the, the connection between the two brains. It's a sensorial. Yeah, that master sensorial is the, um, the cortex, so that in people who are worried or overly th thinking too much, <laughs> that'd be a good one to treat. Cerebral. How you feeling? Better. Excellent. Yeah, it, does, it really does make <laughs> you feel better. And in a calmer and a, and a more balanced kind of thing. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I really, after I did my, and I keep forgetting, I, I should really have Andrea do this to me every day. I mean, once you really understand what this does and how you feel, you say, gee, we could all be better off if we were more balanced in each day. So uh, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I think it could help out with a brain injury. It's not, you know, it's it's not like, surgery <laughs> it's 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 it really falls more into the whole it falls more into the realm of of stealing the microphone so oh. we can hear their questions oh, okay yeah it falls um more into the realm of um acupuncture in the sense that you're balancing yin and yang i mean that's really all about yin and yang and and that we tend to get out of balance and this is a, uh, a way of changing the energy in the body in such a way that you come more into balance. So this is a balancing technique. Uh, Medicare does pay for this as a TENS treatment because you're using electrical, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. Now you're doing it very precisely, whereas most TENS units, you just put them on your back where you're hurting. So this is a pain relieving technique. But I think if you think of this just as relieving pain, you're thinking of it too narrowly. It does relieve pain if someone's hurting you can use this and it will take the pain level down. But all these other, like the master points, balancing some of these other conditions, you know, balancing those conditions, I think it can be very effective in that way as well. Yeah. In terms of, in terms of hours or something like that, how long does a treatment, how long is it effective? Well, like, like this balancing effect, it's not, you know, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk out of here and I'm going to you know, if I got in my car, I'd be back in the middle of traffic and it'd be, you know, you lose a lot of it. I mean, it's like meditation. You know, uh, the, the idea of really a good meditation program is where you're meditating maybe once or twice a day and, and you're kind of creating, you're cultivating a state of meditation. So I think if you did this, not that you had to do it every day, but if you did it fairly regularly, most of our patients, if they, if they have gotten benefits from this, they come in several times a week and they get, it's like an adjustment. It's like an electrical adjustment of your brain. And so if you're really out of balance, you probably need to have several treatments to get it back into balance. And, but once you're back in balance, as long as you don't get injured again or thrown, thrown into a stressful situation that you know, throws you back out of balance, you, it probably would, it would last. With this particular way of doing it with the electrical stimulation, is the diagnostic uh, setting on the instrument any different than the treatment setting? Or do you, do you change any dial? I don't think you change anything, or do you? Or? We change the frequency uh, for different parts of the ear. So in the earlobe, we have a higher frequency, and then on the inner ear, you're going to have a lower frequency. To It's a little more sensitive in there. And, you, and, and we do uh, have sheets where, you know, we, when Andrea's finished with a new patient, she'll bring that in and I'll kind of look at it and see if there's any areas that are really out of balance, you know, and that'll kind of help me in my understanding of what's going on with the patient. With Dr. Hunt and Hockey, for each of the eight or so things that you... Master points. Master points that you treated, it went back to, to be more level. What happens if it never does? 
Does that ever happen? Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, there are people who have, if you have serious brain damage, uh, it, it may not completely normalize, you know, with, with many different treatments. I think the more you treat, the more you're kind of bringing it into balance. But then there are nutritional factors and there are life factors and how well you sleep. So it's just, it's part of the mix of life, but it just, it's just a way of accessing your brain electrically, whereas most of the time the only way we can access our brain is cognitively or surgically or uh, maybe when we run, we get into a certain mental state. But this is a kind of another way of accessing the brain that the average person doesn't have that can help balance it. Yes, I was just wondering if uh, this type of treatment has any benefit to arthritis and arthritis pain? I think so. What's your? It's gonna help treat the pain for the arthritis physical problems, if the bones are rubbing together, I can't fix that, but pain, definitely. Yeah, it's, what it's going to do is it's going to stimulate endorphins. It may help reduce inflammation, you know, the microcirculation of that particular area. And so from a physiologic, biochemical point of view, it's going to be beneficial. But if you've got bone on bone, you may still need to have a knee replacement if, if, you, if it's gone that far. But if you have someone that's just in the early stages, uh, that it'd be, it'd be like uh, when we do the cytotoxic testing and we take people off of tomatoes if they're very allergic to tomatoes. That's less of an inflammatory stimulus to the inflammation. In a similar way, if you do this treatment, you reduce the inflammation, that slows down the degeneration in that point. If someone's got really advanced arthritis, they can come in and have this treatment. It'll probably reduce their pain temporarily, but if there's a lot of damage there, then that in and of itself will trigger more inflammation, and so it can start to come back. So this is not an in and of itself, this is not a comprehensive treatment, but it is a modality that can be part of a treatment plan. Uh, you treat the, you, uh, if you've got a problem on the left side of your body, the idea is to treat the left ear. If you've got a problem on the right side, treat the right ear. But if you're treating, you know, like the master points, it does, I don't think it matters which ear you're using. Are there individuals where I know that the protocol is the eight seconds that you're doing the treatment part? Is there any further therapeutic value to doing that two or three times instead of just the eight seconds in that spot? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and do you know that and you automatically do that or does the patient have to help you assess that? Or For the master points, we usually do the eight seconds. For other points of the body, like if you're having pain in your knee, we usually at least go up to 16 seconds. Uh, if there's just, that's your biggest problem is your knee, we can do it two minutes. Okay. Pour it on. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to make your ear hurt either. So. Yeah, because you are, you are creating, a, it is an electrical stimulation, so if you just, the longer you treat that point, the more kind of inflamed it gets at that point. So there is a point of diminishing returns. So can, in one session, can you treat more than one issue? Because I according to these protocols, there's different protocols like for the bedwetting or for if somebody was arthritic and a smoker and overweight, for instance, are you going to do think all of those I, protocols all at one time? Yeah, I mean, you know, and again, there's diminishing returns there, but I think you could treat several protocols at the same session if you wanted to. And, very, and what you'll find is that if the, if, the, if the problems are related, very likely many of the same points will be in both protocols or all three protocols if you're doing three. So... Uh, as you noticed, I guess the, the bedwetting mm -hmm. and the um, uh, hiccups, there were some overlap points there, you know, even though that you'd think those are two different things, but they are, indic you know, they both re represent something being out of control. You know, normally you, you can't control bedwetting, you can't control your hiccups. Hiccups is not considered to be a major problem, and usually the body figures it out and the hiccups stop. But there are people that have had, you know, really long-lasting hiccups. It can be a serious problem for some folks. And so this would be a great treatment plan for them rather than putting them on a, some kind of a major suppressive medicine. It's a non-pharmacologic way of helping the body correct that particular issue. Okay. 
Yeah, Russ. I just want to make a make a. a uh, Ruth's mother was t taking uh, acupuncture from Doctor Tenero, and then one day at the stoplight, you know, something happened to him, and he wasn't around anymore. Yeah. And they, she went to the uh, ear, and. Did the same thing. It helped. It's saying the same way. It, it is acupuncture. I mean, it's just it's uh, it's it's just working in one area, and it's a it's a it's uh, some people have said that they believe that auricular therapy is more potent than acupuncture. But you know, it depends on who you talk to. It's what you're familiar with and what you've got the most expertise in using. This is very easy to do, though, and uh, with acupuncture, people have to undress, and you're putting needles all over their body and. This, you can basically, you're dressed, you just lie down on the, normally we don't do it sitting down, we do it where you're lying down, and it's a very wonderful experience for most people. It's not a, it doesn't create tension or worry. People look forward to having their auricular treatment. Yeah, so it worked very well for her. That's great. And I think she used, what, once a week or something. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, do you? I just have a question, what about high blood pressure? Oh, yeah. I think that would be, a de it, you know, again, I wouldn't want you to uh, make that your only treatment. I mean, you know, you, you, but for someone who wants to reduce their medication or who is in the early stages of getting their nutritional factors figured out, this would be a good kind of bridge, you know, to kind of help them get their blood pressure under control. Because it, if there's, and certainly if there's an element of where you're stressed or there's a tension component, this definitely has a nice relaxation effect that's uh, I think would help the high blood pressure. Do we want to, yeah, one, yeah. Ruth. if you've had a heart attack, would that be good to help Sh the, sure. the, from the stress from that? Yeah, yeah. See, again, it's all about healing. You know, the body wants to heal. And uh, even, you know, there's a, what, there's a Latin saying, um, medica sonat naturis curat. The physician treats, but nature heals. And so in a similar way, all we're doing here, we're, we're, uh, we're stimulating these points, but we're basically stimulating with the intent of helping the body balance itself out. It's kind of, we're, we're kind of imparting some focused balance into the body. But the, then the body heals on its own accord. It's not that this makes it get better. The heart wants to heal after the injury has occurred, but if you can calm it down and balance the sympathetic and the endocrine in the brain, you know, that's going to help. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope this was interesting and kind of got your interest up. And so feel free to, if you want to come in, you know, like I mentioned, uh, the, they're not expensive treatments. Uh, they're about, what, 15, 20 minutes for a, for a treatment. And uh, if you're an established patient, you can come any time. If you're not an established patient, you can easily become one. And it's a very useful tool for all of you. So. Regular price is 47 I believe. But yeah, Medicare $47. covers part of it. And then Medicare Medicaid. covers a, a chunk of it then. What if you're not Medicare aged? Yeah, I'm not if Medicaid. you're not Medicare aged, then it's $47, $47 for a treatment. No insurance covers for it? I don't know. I think we would, <laughs> we would, we would probably, depends upon your diagnosis and then how we submit it and, and then the individual insurance company. Well, thank you for coming today. <laughs>